And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Luke 21, verse 28. We must have a greater nearness to God. Much less of self and much more of Jesus Christ and his grace must be brought into our everyday life. We are living in an important period of this world's history. The end of all things is at hand. The sands of time are fast running out. Soon in heaven it will be said, it is done. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Let us, as a people, as far as possible, cleanse the camp of moral defilement and aggravating sins. When sin is making its march upon the people who claim to be elevating the moral standard of righteousness, how can we expect God to turn his power in our behalf and save us as a people that did righteousness? Satan will work his miracles to deceive. He will set up his power as supreme. The church may appear as about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners in Zion will be sifted out the chaff separated from the precious wheat. This is a terrible ordeal, but nevertheless it must take place. None but those who have been overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony will be found with the loyal and true, without spot or stain of sin, without guile in their mouths. The remnant that purify their souls by obeying the truth gather strength from the trying process, exhibiting the beauty of holiness amid the surrounding apostasy. All these, he says, I have graven upon the palms of my hands, Isaiah 49, verse 16. They are held in everlasting, imperishable remembrance. We want or lack faith now, living faith. Dear brethren, the Lord is coming. Lift up your thoughts and heads and rejoice. Oh, we would think that those who hear the joyful news, who claim to love Jesus, would be filled with joy unutterable and full of glory. This is the good, the joyful news, which should be repeated in our homes and told to those whom we meet on the street.